lightning is a dramatic natural force. But what causes it? On a smaller scale, a spark can be produced in the lab. Sparks and lightning are both a flow of charge. In each case, the charge is built up by friction. Some objects can become charged simply by rubbing them. The charge on this plastic rod is too small to form a spark, but big enough to attract pieces of paper. And big enough to influence the path of this stream of water. To find out why the rod becomes charged, you have to think about what's happening to the atoms it's made up of. Atoms contain positive charges called protons and negative charges called electrons. Normally the number of protons and electrons is the same, so the atom has no overall charge, it's neutral. Friction between the cloth and rod changes this balance. In this case, the cloth rubs electrons off the atoms in the rod, so the rod becomes positively charged. A van de Graaff generator produces enough charge to generate a spark. Take a look inside and you can see a motorised rubber belt. It passes around a Perspex roller at the bottom and at the top. As the belt rubs against the roller, it acts like the cloth on the plastic rod. It rubs off electrons, leaving the rod positive, while the belt becomes negative. The electrons are collected by a spring and transferred to the metal dome. Because it has nowhere else to go, the charge builds up. It can't move from the dome, so it's called static charge. Place a conductor near it, like this small metal sphere, and the charge can move. It leaps across, producing a spark. Charge builds up on anything in contact with the dome. Each fibre of Lindsay's hair becomes negatively charged. Like charges repel, so they move as far away as possible from each other. But for this to work, the charge needs to be static. It mustn't leak away. Standing on polystyrene blocks acts as good insulation. What would happen if Lindsay stepped down onto the floor? The generator produces some interesting effects, but can you explain how? Why do the polystyrene balls rise and fall? What's causing the bulb to light up? Connecting a wire to the dome provides a path for the charge to flow along. It travels through an ammeter, which is connected to the base of the generator to complete a circuit. registers a flow of current. Electricity is simply a flow of negative charge. Static electricity becomes a flow of electricity as soon as it's able to move. A fluorescent tube held next to the charged dome flickers as a current flows. But static electricity can cause problems. Every time an aircraft takes on fuel, there's a build-up of charge as the liquid rubs against the rubber pipe. To prevent the charge causing an explosive spark, a wire is connected between the tanker and the metal body of the aircraft before the fuel is pumped. The line ensures that no charge can build up on the plane. Both tanker and plane also have special tyres, which conduct electricity to the ground. A 
A similar charge builds up as the plane rushes through the air, rubbing past air particles. To discharge this build-up of static electricity, they have small metal spikes on the edges of their wings. These provide an easy route for any charge to leak away. Lightning is a giant flow of electric charge from a cloud to Earth. But where is the friction that causes it? Earth is surrounded by a magnetic field. It behaves as if there's a huge bar magnet running from north to south deep inside the Earth. Like all magnets, the Earth is surrounded by invisible lines of force. The needle of a compass comes to rest along these lines. Magnetic fields are invisible but small compasses show up a pattern. Each curved line is a line of magnetic force. A needle is made magnetic by stroking a magnet past it. Stick it through a piece of cork and it floats. Just like a compass, it's affected by the invisible forces of a magnetic field. Wherever the float is placed, it's attracted along a curved path. Each time it traces out different lines of force. This is liquid nitrogen, and as you might expect, pouring it through a magnetic field has no effect. But see what happens with liquid oxygen. The oxygen is held in the magnetic field, showing where the force lines are strongest. Liquid oxygen must be slightly magnetic. Iron filings sprinkled over a bar magnet also show up lines of magnetic force, but it isn't just a two-dimensional pattern. This magnet is surrounded by iron filings suspended in a liquid. The magnetic field lines go all the way around it. But magnetic fields don't only occur around bar magnets. When a current flows through this wire, the compass needle deflects to one side. An electric current produces a magnetic field. Plotting compasses show the circular field pattern around the wire. A coil of wire with an electric current flowing through it produces a field similar to that of a bar magnet. As the electricity is switched on and off, so is the magnetic field. Electromagnets at scrapyards and recycling centres work on the same principle. The large metal disc has a huge coil of wire inside it. Pass an electric current through the coil and the magnetic field produced is strong enough to lift a heavy load. These iron shavings show up the pattern of the magnetic field. As the space shuttle orbits the Earth, it carries out experiments. In 1996, scientists hoped to produce electricity on a grand scale by using a simple physics principle. A wire 20 kilometres long was strung out in space 
and dragged through the Earth's magnetic field. The idea was to generate up to 5,000 volts, but unfortunately, the wire snapped. 150 years ago, Faraday discovered that moving a piece of wire through a magnetic field produced a voltage. If the wire is stationary, nothing happens. Move the wire from one pole to the other, and again, nothing happens. Only when the wire moves up and down is a voltage produced. It's all to do with cutting lines of force. The wire needs to cut through the field lines before a voltage is induced. Following a line of the magnetic field has no effect. The results are the same if the magnet moves instead of the wire. A changing magnetic field induces a voltage and an electric current flows. This is known as electromagnetic induction and is the main method used for generating electricity. This generator produces electricity by rotating a coil of wire inside a magnet. It turns mechanical energy into electrical energy. Here, the mechanical energy is provided by the human body. Power stations generate electricity in a similar way. Huge turbines are rotated. These are often powered by steam. Other generators use wind. The electric current produced by a power station varies in direction. This simple piece of apparatus shows how. Here, a magnet rotates around a wire. As the magnet moves around, force lines are broken and the magnetic field changes. In this position, most lines of force are being broken. The induced current is at its highest. As the magnet is rotated, the field changes direction and the current also reverses. The current oscillates, first one way, then the other. It's called alternating current, or AC. Once a power station has generated electricity, it needs to transmit it across country to people's homes. Electricity flows along miles of overhead and underground cabling. But when an electric current flows through any wire, it heats up. This steel rod completes a circuit. As the current is increased, the rod begins to glow. Eventually, it becomes white hot and so soft it can even be tied in a knot. Transmitting a high current would be very inefficient. Most of the electrical energy would be lost as heat. So how do power stations prevent large-scale heat loss when sending electricity to our homes?